coming up, Wreck-It Ralph and Vanellope move to the Imagination Pavilion in Epcot with a new portal that transports them into the internet. The Innoventions buildings inch closer to extinction with some new info from an inside source. And construction continues on the Space Restaurant in Epcot. My name is Brayden and this is Mickey Views News. All who come to this happy place, welcome. Now I'm the king of the swingers. That's what Epcot is, an experimental prototype community that will always be in a state of becoming. First up in Epcot this week, Wreck-It Ralph and Vanellope have moved into Imageworks at the ride exit to Journey into Imagination, where they are now greeting guests. The thing that really caught Disney fans by surprise and created some buzz around this is that part of the meet and greet set includes this artfully made LED tunnel, which Ralph and Vanellope go through on their way to meet guests, the tunnel of course symbolizing them arriving from the internet to tie it in with Wreck-It Ralph 2, but there's something oddly familiar with this tunnel, especially with it being in the Imagination Pavilion of all places, as many Disney fans are drawing a lot of similarities between this tunnel and another tunnel that used to be in Imageworks, the Rainbow Corridor Michael Jackson famously got photos in. So this tunnel revealed here got a lot of people saying, hey, did they reopen the Rainbow Corridor? But in fact, the original has been dismantled and was on the second floor of the Imagination Pavilion where Imageworks used to be way bigger. It used to have its own floor. The second second floor of the Journey into Imagination Pavilion, whereas this new tunnel is on the first floor in the smaller image works that is now directly on the first floor of the ride exit of the attraction before you head into the gift shop area. Point being, it's not the original tunnel, and it's definitely meant to be, you know, Ralph and Vanellope arriving in Epcot from the internet, but there is definitely a nod here from the designers, the way the tunnel is shaped and all the multicolor lighting effects. I do think that the Imagineers are winking at us a little bit here. A great homage to the original Imagination Pavilion Tunnel, and given Disney included a stylized poster of the old Rainbow Tunnel on the Christmas Tree Trail in Disney Springs this past year, I think this old favorite has not escaped the memories of the people at Disney. Always great to see little nods like this, and great to see Disney making such a permanent, high-quality meet-and-greet space for Ralph and Vanellope, uh, which brings us right to our next story that will answer the question of what a permanent Ralph and Vanellope meet-and-greet is doing in the Imagination Pavilion in the first place, when they came to Epcot back in November, Ralph and Vanellope were located in Innoventions West. The Innoventions buildings in Epcot are largely empty and have a ton of space for meet and greets. They already have some there with the Epcot character spot, of course. So the question becomes, why did Disney move Ralph and Vanellope out of all that perfectly good unused space at Innoventions and cram them into the exit area of Journey into Imagination? The answer is, it's not so much about Ralph and Vanellope and West whether or not they fit somewhere, uh, like the Imagination Pavilion, but more so a matter of just getting things out of Inventions. Because, watch this, we can actually change the lights on the set here uh, for a breaking news alert. This is partial speculation on my part, but we have a trusted source working hands-on implementing the show lighting and technology for the new spectaculars coming to Epcot, Epcot Forever, and Project Kappa to follow, which are both being implemented at the same time here. And this source has reason to believe the Innoventions buildings themselves, home to the Character Spot, Club Cool, Starbucks, Fountain View, Mouse Gear, all of that, those buildings are not long for this world. And there are many rumors out there that they might be getting demolished in the not so distant future. The substantive side of this story comes from our source on the ground in Epcot, who actually helped us break the news of the Epcot Forever show coming to Epcot a month before anyone else was even on the story. Some big insiders people follow were saying that we were wrong and that actually was was a project at one point, but Disney had canceled that project a while ago. And then sure enough, about a month after we broke that story right here on YouTube, Disney officially confirmed it at the Destination D event. And I was so excited. We plan to break some more big stories this year leading up to the D23 Expo. So make sure you're subscribed and notifications on because we don't just cover the news here. We actually break stories here you can't find anywhere else. So the info we got from that same source is that they are not putting any show lighting or technology 
technology on the top of the Interventions buildings in connection with these new shows, which in the past, the top of Interventions uh, has actually been used for various shows and spectaculars because the height of the buildings is really good for setting up lighting effects, especially stuff that Disney has been adopting lately, from lasers to especially those beautiful spotlights you now see with Happily Ever After in the Magic Kingdom, as well as on the Chinese Theater and Hollywood Studios. Disney loves those spotlights uh, in these new shows, and I think the guests do too. Those are absolutely amazing. I'm really glad to see Disney keep implementing those at all these various shows, and you think somewhere like Interventions would be a really good spot for those. You know, they can be on each side of Spaceship Earth, all that sorts of stuff. So point being, as far as the development of these two huge new Epcot Spectaculars is concerned, they are putting these shows together under the idea that when the shows are live, Interventions may no longer exist. And you may be saying, of course this is the case, Brayden. We already saw the concept art with the Interventions buildings gone uh, back at the D23 Expo in 2017. But the thing you have to understand about that art is, even at the time of the Expo where they showed it, I suspect it was outdated art and development had already moved on a little bit from that vision that you see in the art. As Disney never published the art anywhere online, even the day of the Expo when they revealed it, all the photos we have of that concept art are physical photos of the projection screen showing it inside the convention hall. So I think it was sort of just a visual thing to see, okay, this is what we're working on, uh, showing us Disney fans what they were thinking of with the Epcot overhaul, uh, but they weren't, you know, saying like, this is what it's going to end up like or anything like that. It was blue sky art, but I suspect it was, you know, a little bit old uh, blue sky art and they had actually already come up with some new ideas and new things. So it was really up in the air. Is Interventions going? Is it staying? We really didn't know. And since that expo, the vast Epcot overhaul has been in delays, according to insiders, likely doing further development to perfect the vision and plans of exactly what they are going to do with the Epcot overhaul. And my speculation based on the info we received from that source about them not doing anything uh, with Interventions and, you know, they're moving meet and greets out of it and all that sort of stuff is I suspect the first massive project in the Epcot overhaul is about to get underway. Beyond Guardians and Ratatouille and uh, the Space Restaurant, which are all individual projects, one of the most vast Epcot overhaul projects is the Epcot Spine Project, which I suspect might be just about ready to get underway. What Disney's doing with the Epcot Spine Project is Disney is said to be planning to overhaul everything from the front gates entering the park all the way to the World Showcase down the spine of Future World. And the reason this project is important is it's been a long time complaint that the new park guests have a hard time navigating Epcot from entering the front gates and then having to go around those massive slabs of granite, the Weeble Legacy monoliths, and then going around Spaceship Earth to one side or the other, and then the paths meet back up, and then they split up again around the Fountain of Nations, and then all the while in that Fountain of Nations area, those mostly empty Interventions buildings are obstructing views of the Future World pavilions. So a lot of people don't know exactly where they're at. Of course, all of us watching this show uh, know the layout of Epcot and how to get around and everything, but you can probably understand why a lot of new guests might get confused. And even beyond the layout being confusing, there are also crowd flow issues here, especially at the front gates entering the park, where all the guests are trying to, you know, enter and exit through a 10 to 15 foot space on each side of the planter, uh, between the planter and those Leave a Legacy monoliths. So rumor is Disney wants to reimagine all of that, improve the flow of guests, and make the layout much more aesthetically pleasing and less confusing for regular park guests. And given that our own source working on the show tech for Epcot Forever and Project Kappa says that they've heard the buildings could be slated for demolition in the not so distant future, plus the fact that we're already seeing Disney actively moving things out of them, moving Wreck-It Ralph to a permanent place over in the Imagination Pavilion of all places, I think it very well may be that once Disney figures out how to relocate the Epcot character spot, perhaps over to the Wonders of Life, those Interventions buildings at that point uh, might be no more. And with that, the Epcot Spine Project would finally get underway, the first massive project of renovating the park. Let me know your thoughts on all of that. Last up in Epcot this week, work is continuing on the Space Restaurant in Epcot, located between Mission Space and Test Track, where this week, viewer Brendan sent in these amazing photos where you can see work actually happening on this curved part of the restaurant on the back of the restaurant there, which in fact isn't the restaurant itself. That structure you're looking at is actually the projection dome, the projection screen area that the restaurant windows will be facing out towards, be looking into. So that area right there, that's where the projection will be to make the inside of the restaurant look like outer space, look like through those windows, you're looking out into outer space. That is what that area is there. I'm so excited for the space restaurant. A lot of people are excited to find out what kind of food they'll have at a space themed restaurant. But personally, I'm most excited just to be in that new Imagine 
engineering concept environment of feeling like you are in outer space. Because the space window's effect on this restaurant seems like a test for the implementation of that tech in a much bigger way with the Star Wars Hotel on the way to Walt Disney World, which will have a very similar setting and premise to what we have going on here with the space restaurant. Let me know what you guys think. That's today's latest news in the world of Disney. Let us know your thoughts on the show and all the latest in the Disney universe. Be sure to subscribe with those notifications on to never miss an episode. There is no set time or day when these Mickey Views news episodes come out. It's literally whenever we have news to talk about. So those notifications are the best way to be the first to get the news. I just want to thank you all so much for all the comments and feedback on the first episode that came out on Monday. I'm having so much fun making these. Also, please leave me some Disney questions in the comments below on this video as I'm about to record our first ever Q&A episode of the Magic Weekly, which will be out on Friday. So I need your most pressing, most interesting Disney questions so I can answer them there. I was thinking maybe we could talk about what's going on with the possibilities of another park or what their Disney's going to do with all that land that they've been buying up uh, that they were buying up uh, while I was off building the new set. I want to talk about that and so much more. We have a lot to talk about. If you'd like some Mickey Views buttons, this is your last chance to grab some. I plan on closing the Mickey Views store uh, by the end of the month here and then rebooting our merchandise lineup with all new stuff, uh, some new shirts and things like that. So if any of these awesome current Mickey Views store items, the buttons in particular, if any of them are of interest to you, be sure to get them before they are gone. If you want even more Disney news, we have a new audio flash briefing available every weekday morning where I let you know the latest happenings in the world of Disney. If you're in the US, you can just go on Amazon, search Mickey Views, enable the Amazon Echo skill, and then ask Echo, uh, your Echo for the latest news, and I will be there to break it all down for you uh, on the other end of the Echo there. Uh, it plays uh, my audio where I talk about all the latest happening every single morning. And if you don't have an Echo, or if you're an international viewer, Mickey Views Daily News is also available uh, worldwide on the Apple Podcast app, Google Play, Spotify, so many more. Links below for all that. That's all for this episode of Mickey Views News. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Brayden. Have a magical day.